In this video, I'll be showing you how to turn this into this. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So as you saw from the title, we're gonna turn uh, this image into this. So okay, without any further ado, let's get into it. First thing we're gonna do is transform this image from day to night. By that I mean it's currently in daytime and I want it to be in, a, in the night time because that I think will just work better. And certain things you need to kind of uh, keep in your head and kind of arrange the composition that way. Or you can even uh, sketch out a composition if that works for you. Alright, so first thing I use is the moonlight preset here as you can see. And that works fantastically whenever I'm trying to, you know, do a composition that's night time like this. So basically all I did was just open that and used some uh, soft brushes to kind of mask out this uh, butterfly because I wanted it to glow. Next step what I did was I actually added this background as you can see here because uh, as you can see it kind of looks a little uh, empty in the background so all I did was I just got some images from Google and just blurred them. Another quick tip I guess would be using field blur and the blur gallery instead of Gaussian blur that because this one just kind of works way better than that it's an enhanced version in a way. So next thing I did was basically add these butterflies and kind of added some motion blur and stuff like that. Then I added the glow. So at this point it was kind of done. But then I add some color corrections, some you know particles, small details and some more color corrections and another image right here that's blurred. Then using camera raw I finished this. But that's of course not how long it took, it took way longer than this. So let's uh, dive into it and kind of get into the details of everything. Alright, so once you've got your image uh, from Google uh, and you're ready to kind of start, I'm going to teach you guys how to turn a day into night. So if your composition, you don't want to do that, you can just skip that part entirely. It's not necessary at all. Now. This I kind of turn to night and this kind of goes for all compositions. You need to kind of understand how light works. So you, as you can see here, there's a butterfly going to be that, that's hitting this. So that's going to catch some light. So we need to kind of remove the night preset from there. You'll understand later. So I use the pen tool here too to kind of, you know, add some uh, glow here. So we don't want that on there as well. Next thing I did was add more detail and by the way if you're wondering where I got this images from as you can see they're all from pixels.com it's, it's a site where they have copyrighted copyright free images and you can use them in uh, whatever you want you can even print them so that's pretty good next thing you need to do uh, is kind of make sure that the composition you have in your head is going to work so I'd suggest kind of, you know, doing some trial and error because sometimes it doesn't really work uh, the way you want it to. So basically now, as you can see, we're just going to close all of these layers and you can see there's only one butterfly. Of course, we want more of them. So I added this, just copied this and pasted it all the way. Now you might be wondering why I added the blur on the butterflies. I just think it looks a bit more natural and also you could add motion blur don't overdo these things because it could end up in you losing a lot of detail now what i did was just continue copy and pasting that butterfly image so i added one here and there now as you may notice some butterflies are more blurred than others that means that they're more closer to the composition than other others as you can see here this one's more blurred than let's just say this one that's because this one is closer to the camera and that one is more further away from it so you need to understand things like those and once you get the hang of it it's uh, pretty easy so now all I did was kind of I decided to make the eyes glowing that's another thing that I really like to do and it's quite simple just use hue and saturation with the mode screen or you could use color dodge and anything like that 
Now, what I wanted to do was of course make them glow because the butterflies like this kind of looked really boring. So I first changed the color because I just think blue butterflies fit a lot more than this yellow toned butterflies. I used hue and saturation and as you can see masking here using some soft brushes. And then the basic main part of this entire composition is the glow. This is probably the most uh, complicated part and where people kind of fall short I'd say. So let me show you how to do this. Alright, so first thing I want you guys to do is to not use screen or lighten for this. Those modes work in some situations but in situations where you want to make things glow, they just don't look as good as some of the other modes I'm going to show you. So first thing I do is just grab a blue color like that and just kind of paint on these butterflies that just makes gives the illusion that they're glowing but it's not quite enough yet so we're gonna keep on adding till we're satisfied with it so I added another glow this one you can gradually decrease the opacity and increase the size that gives it a natural look now I just made the eye glowing as I wanted to do that and then I added another layer as you can see just look at that difference at the end we just added a small layer and then adding a big layer really makes a difference it makes it look more natural more realistic and then we just added you know more more and more light till we were satisfied with it i just added another light source at the bottom i just felt like that kind of look good don't overdo this you can you can easily overdo it in fact i probably overdid it here because i was just experimenting and yeah, just keep on adding the lights until you're satisfied. Now, another thing I wanted to tell you guys is please don't do this just making the darker and lighter color. When you're trying to, you know, add a glow, first start with this kind of color if you're using blue. Kind of slowly but surely go up in the color wheel as you increase the size of your brush. As you increase more layers. That gives a more natural look and just using one color so basically if you use just one color that's not gonna give it a natural look so make sure you're shifting the tones constantly and yeah now next thing I do is add color corrections it's it's quite easy all you have to do is go through all of these settings and just uh, adjust them to your liking I just added some particles because I thought they looked cool and at this stage I kind of uh, forgot about the contrast as you can see it's not really contrasty here and I wanted to change that so I added another image right on the bottom there and and I added another smoke as you can see so adding smoke and small details like this you, you may not be be able to notice them easily but in the end they're gonna make a huge difference now adding camera raw uh, filters usually people some people you know just don't know how to use it either they overdo it or they don't do it at all so please don't do that it's a simple thing all you have to do is go up here click on that button and it'll load up and it's quite easy to do so as you can see we are in the camera raw settings panel here all you have to do here is just shift these things until you're satisfied with them as you can see in the presets tab I've used it for practically all of my designs and I use it uh, almost everywhere in everything I do so yeah make sure you're using camera raw okay, delete. now I'm going to show you guys a few examples of my friends because you know they make artworks like this too uh, the artwork you're seeing right now is made by TM design underscore so make sure to follow her in, on Instagram uh, link in the description so as you can see here uh, the composition is pretty nice and you can see the lighting really feels as if it's there it doesn't feel fake the shadows you can see are on point so th for the shadows most people will focus only on the highlights but shadows are just as important so for shadows I usually do is use the exposure turn that down and then kind of invert the mask and then we can just kind of paint in the shadow of course you'd want to be using a soft brush and there's probably a million ways you could do that but uh, the one I use is usually the easiest now as you can see the ambient light from the sky actually hits the character here and the dog and the car so you need to learn 
that light actually bounces off of surfaces you can see that hits the car and then it's also hitting John Wick and all of the other character and uh, things in the composition another tip would be for shadows is you just all you have to do is get a shock brush so we're going to do that right now and if there's like a basketball for something you can use this technique usually works for everything just uh, paint it in like that and then control T holding shift we can just drag it down and you can place anything on top of that and boom it looks like an actual shadow you can play around with the perspective and anything like that so as you can see this composition if you want to make stuff like this you need to learn how shadow and light works now as you can see on this composition it's quite tricky because you have to work with all of these uh, different colors plus you have to you know kind of do this and I actually struggle with this too so if there's a composition like this I'd suggest you know just add some ambient light on the subject as you can see TM here has added some amazing light on the subject and just adding that light and the shadows makes your work a lot more realistic and believable and this example is a perfect example for atmospheric perspective that means that if something's more further away it's gonna get more fainted it's not gonna be as vibrant so actually I think uh, she should have of course you know blurred this more I don't know if I can just not see it because the image is not that high quality but uh, as you can see on the buildings you can actually see that these buildings aren't as uh, vibrant as this one right here so that's called atmospheric perspective just look at the city right here and how colorful it looks and look at it back there that's the same city but because of atmospheric perspective it will look more fainted now another example of uh, amazing lighting would be by my friend Exolorine here uh, his link will be also in the description so make sure to check both of them out they make some amazing artworks so this one right here is by Exolorian and as you can see this looks so real you can even tell that it's actually made in Photoshop so how did he do this now first thing as I showed you that technique that basketball technique he used that on this subject as you can see right here he used that technique on the bowl and on all of the other things in this composition he added some actual shadow here on his uh, vest whatever he's wearing actually and adding the shadow on the building the light from the sky actually hits the subject things like that make the composition more believable and more realistic and in this composition you know there's a lot of light coming from this lightsaber you can see there's uh, orange highlights on these robots on Maul's face and everywhere you can see the lighting here is really amazing now this one would probably be one of the best examples for natural light as you can see there's a lot of natural light ambient light coming from the sky there and you can see he's really managed to kind of add that light properly in and you can't even tell that he's added these leaves that's how natural they look so you can see these leaves that are kind of closer to the camera are blurred that's a very important thing he does and I've actually learned from that so you can see this light hits the motorcycle actually you need to add those highlights and adding that will really just help your work uh, to get to the next level you may have noticed by now that all of these compositions look uh, very nice because that's another thing and that's very important that is color corrections I'm not gonna go in too deep for that because because that would probably require another separate video or two so basically what that is is basically going through all of these settings multiple times to create a composition that feels like it's actually happening so as you can see the orange composition and the orange subject really fits in with the background and the motorcycle and all of that so learn those things and hopefully the tips I provided in today's video helped you guys. Make sure to follow my social medias in the description. And yeah, leave your ideas for the next video below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.